Frontline therapy for metastatic colorectal cancer actually hasn't changed that much over the last number of years. Uh, there is a recognition now that full FOX, full Furity based regimens are themselves the standard of care, and that hasn't changed for the better part of 20 years. There is changes with respect to when people should receive uh, an anti-EGFR inhibitor, such as cetuximab, or an anti-VEGF inhibitor, such as bevacizumab, or neither, depending on the patient circumstance or, or molecular characteristics of the tumor. But in terms of actual changes beyond that, there haven't been uh, any, in my opinion, uh, for many years now. So there is a, uh, in some sense, a paradigm of starting with either full FOX or full Fury for all patients with uh, MSS, metastatic colorectal cancer. In my opinion, the complete testing that should be done on any patient in 2018 with metastatic colorectal cancer includes uh, a full RASP panel, which includes not just KRAS exon 2, but KRAS exons 2, 3, and 4, NRAS, and BRAF. And in addition, uh, microsatellite status should be determined. In my opinion, those two are sufficiently well validated that describe what treatment should or should not be given for the vast majority of patients with colorectal cancer. So the MSS, uh, or MSI, I should say, would determine if the patient is a candidate for immunotherapy or checkpoint inhibitor at some point. And obviously, KRAS status determines whether or not they're a candidate for an EGFR inhibitor at some point. BRAF status is important, in my opinion, not just prognostically, but also with the newer data showing the ro possible role of BRAF inhibitors in combination with the colon cancer. Th those patients should be ideally uh, selected for clinical trial options. So when you have a patient with newly diagnosed metastatic disease, it's much easier usually to do it on whatever tissue is available. So as a practical matter, we always recommend finding the most recent tissue specimen. But if the most recent tissue specimen is insufficient and unable to provide the molecular data, it's completely acceptable to use archive tissue, recognizing that it may not be as accurate. With respect to should certain patients get full next generation sequencing done on their tumors, I think that's uh, at this point still premature. I don't think it can be recommended routinely in every patient with colorectal cancer just because of the very infrequent uh, nature of actionable mutations beyond MS, uh, MS status and, uh, and, and RAS testing. So we reserve that for certain patients depending on uh, the familial characteristics and, and, and their preference, but I don't think we can routinely recommend full NGS testing yet on all patients. So we, we have, in, many academic centers have an internal panel that is used. We also have an internal panel of 30 to 40 genes, which covers probably the large majority of those that are actionable. Uh, we do have reflux testing, meaning if it's, if it's uh, KRAS is tested first and NRAS, and if it's RAS mutated, the rest of the panel basically stops. We, we, don't, we don't interrogate the remainder of the alterations. If, the, if RAS is wild type, then we start looking at some of the other ones, including HER2, track fusion, and some of the other more obscure targets that perhaps may have a, a drug directed to them. So, so that's how we do it internally in our system.